Previously, we've seen that the signal-to-noise ratio depends not only on the signal type, but also on the signal size. And compending is a scheme to make the signal-to-noise ratio less dependent on the signal time. Yeah? It means uh, compression and expanding. So the uniform quantization can be seen as a quantization value, which is constant on the absolute scale. On the other hand, no uniform quantization using compending can be seen as having step sizes which stay con constant relative to the amplitude. So their step size grows with the amplitude. So how do we obtain this no uniform quantization? So we first apply a nonlinear function to the signal to boost small values, and then we apply a uniform quantizer. So on the decoding side, we first apply the dequantizer and then the inverse nonlinear function. So we reduce the small values again to restore their original size. So here's the scheme. So we have our signal. We apply a nonlinear function. Here it goes the uniform quantizer. We have this index. And in the, the, the decoder, we have this index. And then we apply the dequantization. And we have the inverse of the nonlinear function. And then we have our reconstructed signal. So the range of the values and the range of the index is compressed and smaller values become larger and large values don't grow as fast. So we use the following standard, standard functions uh, as mu law and a law to do the compending. Yeah? So here is the um, equation for the mu law compending and here are the equations for the a law compending. Yeah? So this compression function is applied before a uniform quantizer in the encoder, and in the encoder, after uniform reverse quantization, the inverse function is applied, turning back y back into x. So um, observe that these equations assume that we first normalize our signal and keep its sign separate. So we, here's an example. So we are going to use the mu law um, compending. And um, mu is equal to 255, which is used in the standard. And then we have a signal x with a maximum amplitude of a. So we have the, we obtain this equation here. So we're keeping the sign separate. So here we're just applying this when mu is equal to 255. And here x, we are doing. Um, here is some kind of normalization. So, in this, in this example of 8 bit mu law, we have the uh, quantization index. So, we are rounding. So, this is the mid thread quantizer, like we've seen before. So, here a y has the range of minus 1 to plus 1. So, it's normalized. And then we have the quantization step size for 8 bits is this and then this index is then encoded as an 8-bit code word. So in the decoder we compute the dequantized y from the mid-thread dequantizer including its sign from the index and we compute the inverse compression function so this is the expanding function and we obtain the inverse through the following steps so here we have the equation for the compression function and we need the inverse of this so we have here we apply the exponential on both sides so this was this goes multiplying here then we apply the exponential and then we have that the inverse it's given by this function here so we get back x from the signal y so observe that with this compending, the effective quantization step size remains approximately constant relative to the signal amplitude. Yeah? So large signal components have large effective step size and hence larger quantization error. And small signals have smaller effective quantization steps and hence smaller quantization errors. In this way, we get a more or less constant signal to noise ratio over a wide range of signal amplitudes. It was important to remember that this, this approach is identical to have non-uniform quantization step size 
smaller size, smaller step size at small signal values and larger step size at larger signal values. The compression expanding of the signal makes the uniform step size look relatively smaller to the signal. It has more quantization steps to cover. So in this has the same effect as a smaller signal with smaller quantization step.